Hi, I'm Jim Colbert. I'm happy to welcome you to Pick Up the Pen, a beginner songwriting workshop created as part of the Central Pennsylvania Festival of the Arts. I've been moved by music my entire life, but not counting a few lighthearted forays in grade school, including a particularly bad set of lyrics about General Custer, I've been writing songs since about the time when I turned 40. I started playing guitar then with the intention of writing songs. I've performed my original songs at festivals, coffee houses, and listening venues from Cape Cod to California, and have brought home awards from songwriting contests including the Pennsylvania Heritage Songwriting Competition, Susquehanna Folk Music Society, and the Rose Garden in Mansfield, Massachusetts. I've also been involved behind the scenes as a disc jockey, a board member for local concert series, on the planning committee for local music festivals, I was the creator of Belfont Unplugged and host of numerous open mics and musical events in the area. My music is acoustic. Uh, one reviewer described it as lyric-driven folk slash Americana, but the principles I'll talk about here are applicable to most any form of music, from reggae to rap. I've led songwriting workshops as part of First Night State College, Generu Arts Festival, Greenwood Furnace Folk Gathering, and Hickory Fest, but this is my first shot at a virtual workshop. Now, part of the joy of those past workshops has been the give and take, the interaction with the attendees. And obviously, we don't have that opportunity virtually. So I'm going to give you a series of prompts and ideas to get you rolling, and hopefully we can be back next year and pick this up in person. So for right now, pick up the pen. So what's the hardest part about songwriting? For many of us, simply picking up the pen. That first hurdle can feel overwhelming. You're staring at the blank page with the anxiety of creating something of worth, pushing back, offering resistance, right? Now, let's be clear, there is no magic formula here for that initial momentum. You have to really want to get started. That drive, that part has to come from within. And sometimes we'll use every excuse under the sun to avoid getting started. I don't have any spare time. I'm dealing with a lot of stuff right now. What if my song isn't any good? I'm really proficient on my instrument, but I've never written a song before. I've even heard all the good songs have already been written. <laughs> that would certainly be news to artists like Jason Isbell, Lynn manuel Miranda, or Jackson Brown. So what can we do? Pick up the pen. And pen, of course, can mean pencil. It can mean a keyboard. It can be a stylus. It can be your phone. It can be an analog typewriter if you're really into that retro thing and that's what works for you. The important thing is you take that first step. Pick up that pen. Make some marks on paper. I like to work in a smaller Moleskine notebook with a blue pen. My friend Joe Crookston, wonderful singer-songwriter from Ithaca, New York, sometimes uses a Sharpie marker in a large artist sketchbook. But it's like a snowball rolling downhill. As you get in the habit of starting, you'll start creating the habit of finishing as well. At first, don't worry about perfection. Don't worry about editing or imperfect rhymes. Just write a line or two. Did something interesting happen to you in your day-to-day? -day? Did a news headline make you feel happy or angry? Did a friend's Facebook status make you feel inspired or blessed? Was there advice or comfort you wanted to give them? Hey, a catchy song was created simply on the premise of you had a bad day, right? You made a lot of money off that. <laughs> so here's your challenge for this component. It's an easy one. We'll just get dipping our toes in a little bit. Before you go to bed tonight, write just one or two lines of potential lyrics. They don't have to be perfect. We're not shooting for perfection right now. They don't have to be edited. Just this is kind of a lump of clay to start forming a song with. So here's a few I came up with. This is the most recent thing I've been working on. Back in the mid-70s, I decided I wanted to learn to box. 
I know this is terribly amusing to anyone that knows me now with my low threshold of pain. Um, needless to say, it wasn't a great fit. I didn't stick with it. Uh, and it was something I hadn't thought about for a long time until I recently read the book Rope Burns by FX O'Toole. Uh, anyway, the first lines I came up with were, the summer I boxed, I was in my teens. Truth. Another kid from the suburbs, acting tough and mean. Truth. I was neither of those things. Had a chip on my shoulder like a 30-pound rock. Thought I might break it if I learned how to box. Now those lines have already evolved some in my notebook. That last line has been changed dramatically. And the song is about three-quarters of the way done as, I, as I'm recording this. Uh, but that's where it started, just those couple lines. So that's your challenge for tonight. Write a couple lines. Just a couple lines. No right or wrong here. The summer I boxed, I was in my teens. Another kid from the suburbs acting tough and mean. I had a chip on my shoulder like a 30 pound rock. Oh, I thought I might break it if I learned how to box. couple lines tonight before you go to bed. I'm stumped. I need something to kickstart my creativity. I did what you said. I picked up the pen. I wrote a few lines. I still don't have a song. What else can I try? Well, Many fine artists, and I'm talking about visual artists, start by copying the work of the masters. You can do your own twist on this as a great songwriting exercise. Now, this idea isn't for something you'd necessarily plan to record uh, or profit from, right? You don't want to pass off anyone else's work as your own. But you can take a cue from people like Bob Dylan, uh, from Woody Guthrie, from A.P. Carter of the Carter family, from the high women, and put new words to an existing melody. Ever hear this land is your land? When I was a DJ on the folk show, I loved to include that song in the same show as When the World's on Fire by the Carter Family. Exact same melody, exact same chords. This land is your land, this land is my land. When the world's on fire, it's the same. <laughs> um, and many people believe A.P. Carter took the melody from someone else's song as he traveled around his native Virginia seeking out the music of the hills. And you can even consider someone like Weird Al Yankovic, a master of song parody, right? That talent made him a wealthy man in the 80s. But what was he essentially doing? Writing new words to an existing melody. Uh, in many cases, Weird Al was creating a topical parody with the blessings of the original artists. You know, they'd sometimes even pop up in cameos in his videos. So your challenge for the next component here is simple. Within the next week, we'll give you a little extra time on this one because they're getting a little more involved. Within the next week, pick out a song with, with a feel, a melody, and a structure that you like. Any genre, it can be country, it can be reggae, it can be Americana. Create new lyrics to at least two of the verses and a chorus. And if you're really feeling it, rewrite the whole song with new lyrics. Uh, while you don't want to imply to anyone else that, that you created the melody or, or the original song, this is simply a great exercise for learning the structure of a song, the meter, and by meter, Kind of think in terms of the number of syllables in a given line of the song uh, and, and the form. Note how often verses repeat or how often choruses pop up. You'll sometimes see in, in old songs like, like This Land is Your Land or um, the, When the World's on Fire that uh, they'll, the chorus will repeat almost after every verse. That's not, as, not a, a really contemporary feel anymore, but it's going to depend on what you're working with as kind of the shell of your starting point or your template. Uh, and rem 
remember, it all starts with picking up the pen. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Island. Write what you know. Virtually every beginning writer is given the advice to write what they know. And of course, many, including myself when I first started, ignore that advice. But if you write about something you know, something that's familiar to you, it will be easier to create a memorable, resonant song. The challenge is writing between the balance of a universal message and something personal enough to have a connection with your intimate understanding of the subject matter. The main thing here is to tap into the emotion behind the song, and if you do so correctly, you're connecting with and moving your listeners. Now there's no prompt for this one, because we're going to be talking about the prompt for the next one, which is, next segment is, where do your ideas come from? Where do you get your ideas? And remember, it's all starting. Pick up the pen. You know the mantra. Pick up the pen. Where do your ideas come from? Where do you get your ideas? Well, if I had a dollar for every songwriter who grabbed inspiration from a story they heard on NPR, I could buy a new guitar. And I mean... A nice new guitar. Canadian singer-songwriter James Keelahan used to have a concert writer requesting one copy of the local daily newspaper in any town he played in. I'm not sure if that writer still exists given the state of print journalism, but that was one of, one of James, uh, James Keelahan's things, looking for inspiration in the stories of the day. And inspiration... Inspiration is all around us if we just open our eyes and start taking it in. The great American painter N.C. Wyeth once said, Sometimes we're so busy looking for beauty overhead that we're trampling it underfoot. For me, I love culling from my environment, the rich history and the stories of the people of Pennsylvania. I've written about steel mills, about the Centralia mine fire, coal miners, my grandparents, uh, even the old cars friends of mine once owned. I can also think of songs other people have written, subject matters ranging from, I'm not kidding, The Sausage Factory, Community Bulletin Boards, uh, Natural Disasters, How the Sun Looked Breaking Over the Susquehanna River. David Tamul Tamulovich wrote that one. Uh, shipwrecks, aging boxers, cattle stampedes, blizzards, and conservation, of course the environment. And, of course, there are always love songs, right? Whether we're celebrating the joy of a resonant relationship, uh, or those sharp little needles of unrequited love. So here's another exercise. Think of your parents, or, or your grandparents. Where did they live? What did they do for a living? Were they affluent? Were they poor? Were they middle class? What did they cook? What kind of car did they drive? Uh, make a list of ten things that remind you, that you remember about them and their lives. Um, I went and worked through this exercise myself and made this into some, um, wrote down a list of traits and things I remembered about my paternal grandparents. My grandfather seldom wore a shirt in the summer. This was to my grandmother's chagrin. But all summer, if he could get away without it, that man was not wearing a shirt. Now, he was retired at the time, and uh, most of this time he was living in Florida, so, you know, it's not like he was still doing a 9-to-5 doing a job. But nonetheless, he wore a shirt grudgingly. My grandmother loved owls. I don't know how she felt about real owls, 
but she loved you know, ceramic owls. She had a lot of little owl statues and knickknacks and tchotchke. Um, my grandmother also had a purple bicycle, the, the trike bikes, that uh, she rode around their neighborhood in Florida. A big basket on the back, right? Uh, I can picture in her floppy, uh, floppy tan hat riding her bicycle. She also always burnt the peas when she cooked peas. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but she always burnt the peas. Um, they used to own a gorgeous red metallic Thunderbird that it just seemed like a spaceship to me when I was about four or five years old. And we had a Falcon uh, station wagon, you know, very Spartan interior. This thing was like a rocket ship, all kind of knobs and dials and chrome. <laughs> <laughs> it was just just made for a for a young boy to get in and marvel at. Um, they had an ice filled Coke cooler in their garage. I begged when they moved to Florida <laughs> for my dad to to take it, but he was all about it's going to cost X amount of electricity to run. Um, had he known what it would eventually be worth as a nostalgia item, you know, he might have reconsidered that. <laughs> Uh, my grandmother would make batches of cookies and, and freeze them in her downstairs freezer. And I would sometimes kind of sneak in when I was down in the basement unattended and, and grab a cookie or two out at the time. Um, what else? Well, my grandfather built the house that they lived in um, when my dad and uncle were growing up. And later, he, he literally traded it. He traded houses for a smaller brick uh, brick house once once my, my dad and my uncles were grown. Um, and most every weekend after he was retired, he would pour, pour himself a small glass of Chivas Regal. And I have that in the middle of the afternoon. So Things I remember about my grandparents. Now what am I gonna do with these things? I, I don't have a clue. Um, but they may turn into a song someday. It certainly has enough fodder here for me to think about. I did write a song uh, that has a bit of my grandfather in, and just from similar things that I remember about him. So remember, your prompt is think of your parents or your grandparents, and list 10 things that you remember or have been told about them and their lives. My granddad was a fisherman, although he always worked on land. Taught me how to sail and how to swim A nine foot boat or a deep sea yacht He'd sail anything he got A gulf or the creek, it was all the same to him I see him now in a photograph Sun slit eyes and great big laugh Standing with the captain and the crew His feet are planted on the bow An albacore they're holding proud And I see him framed by Carolina Blue A little bit about my grandfather So what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Oh wait, no, what comes first, the melody or the lyrics? This would be the probably the second most uh, common question I've been asked as a songwriter. The first, the first is typically, where do your ideas come from? But what comes first, the melody or the lyrics? Well, like a lot of answers in this world, it depends. Every songwriter has their own particular method. And there is no right or wrong here. Just as many artists start with a musical hook or a groove, uh, as start with a set of lyrics in search of the chords. A lot of songwriting workshops will recant the anecdote that yesterday by the Beatles started out with the lyrics, scrambled eggs, as a placeholder to keep the melody in Sir Paul's mind while he worked on the appropriate lyrics for, for what he had created musically. And conversely, 
some of Bob Dylan's early and most creative work barely held a melody at all. The key here is whatever works for you. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's the other, sometimes they're hand in hand. Uh, for me personally, that's very infrequently, but um, usually for me it is, it is lyrics first. Bottom line, there are only so many notes on the musical scale, and there are only so many letters uh, or words in the English language. And it's how we make them live together in synergy and in, well, harmony that makes a memorable song. For the prompt this time around, it asks you to come up with a melodic hook. No words required, of about maybe 10 seconds at most. Think in terms of contrast, the ebb and flow of the notes and how they fall and work together. A very simple melody can be very memorable. Think in terms of, for instance, the McDonald's jingle. Ba 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 ba. So, five simple notes, right? Um, and there is no need for an instrument here. In fact, really, an instrument can sometimes just get in the way because. As instrumentalists, sometimes we're used to we sort of our comfort or default positions. If I sit down with my guitar to work on a song, I'm probably going to default to a G chord fingering, regardless of where, where I might have the capo or anything else going on. Um, because it's what we know, it's muscle memory, it's chord sequences that I'm familiar with. But put the instrument aside. Just do this in your head, or out, well, obviously out loud. Um, Many of us have phones that we can quickly and very easily record these on with just a push of a button, whether you're on the Android or the iOS side. So, short melody, just short little riff, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, people like Neil Young are simply masters of, of things like this, little catchy hooks. And it's just how you make the notes work together. And sometimes walking around while you're doing this can actually create a groove, create a sense of the beat and the rhythm. So for this one, short melody. I know you can do this. And for this one, you don't even need to pick up the pen. Be yourself. Singer-songwriter Carrie Cooper has a circular tattoo that reads, Only you can sing the song that only you can sing. Just keep reading around it forever, right? Such great advice. When I first started writing and playing, I wanted to do one thing. I wanted to write a song as good as Carolina One Time by a wonderful local songwriter. John Rounds. And John and I have talked through the years. He's been a great inspiration and mentor. His take on it is, I can never write a Carolina one time because that's a John Rounds song. But I'll write a Jim Colbert song more authentically than anyone else in the world. And for many performing artists, entertainers if you will, it can take years to find their own voices because they're being steered in commercial directions, directions their management teams feel will be marketable, beneficial to their careers, lucrative, right? Comes back to a dollar sign when all is said and done. You have a distinct advantage here. You're already yourself. And for most of us, we're not concerned when we write a song if it's going to advance our careers or land us a gig at either the State Theater or the Apollo Theater, what have you. The challenge, the prompt this time around, is a bit introspective. Maybe, hopefully stopping short of navel-gazing, but still a bit introspective. Create four lines, rhyming structure of your choice, about something uniquely you. Perhaps it's your best summer memory your first date, uh, your worst date, or your best date, uh, maybe an incident from your childhood, possibly even about what you had for lunch. 
Jimmy Buffett certainly got a lot of mileage out of that cheeseburger, right? So the prompt, four lines about you. Remember, it all starts picking up the pen. We're going to wrap up this virtual workshop. And that means it's time for you to start creating on your own. And what do you need to do to start? Pick up the pen, right? Pick up two pens if you need to. Pick up a nice little notebook or a big sketchbook or your keyboard or your, your phone, whatever works for you. So I've given you about five prompts. I've given you ideas for you to work on to help you get past those initial hurdles uh, and plenty of things to think about. So I want you to take those first few lines of lyrics and create some more. Tell some more of that story, whatever that story was. Try putting some words to the melody you created. Even if it's abstract, maybe it's a jazz feeling uh, scat type lyrics. Um, once you've once you've created a few songs, once you've finished a few songs, you'll see the process becoming very demystified. And I'd love to hear what you've come up with. Please drop me a note at jim at jimcolbertmusic.com. That's J I M at J I M C O L B E R T M U S I C dot com. And hopefully next year we can share what we've created in person. I'll also have these prompts and some songwriting tips up on my website as well. And I encourage you to get on there and check things out. I want to thank the Central Pennsylvania Festival of the Arts for allowing me to share this workshop with you and hope you're enjoying some of the many great events that they have on going virtually during the 2021 Central Pennsylvania Festival of the Arts and looking forward to being back in person next year sharing songs, sharing music, and just having a great festival. And remember, pick up the pen and pick up the keyboard and visit jimcolbertmusic.com for these prompts and for some more tips. Thank you for sticking with me. Have a great festival.